Thank you. Can I request you, uh, Dr. Mahapatra, to, to share your views? Very good afternoon to everyone present here. Honorable Sri Sarad Power Sahab, President, uh, Nationalist Congress Party, and also the visionary leader who led the Indian agriculture from the front. And for 10 years, in fact, shaped many of the developments that we see today. Sri Karandikarji, Mr. Sahaji, ladies and gentlemen, delegates. After listening to the visionary leader, Sri Sarad Powerji, and also after listening to the Baramati model, which speaks how business of agriculture and the bringing agrarian and prosperity to rural India can be achieved. And in fact, uh, I need not repeat what has been already said very eloquently by Pawad Sahab. In fact, uh, as a, a scientist working under his leadership has been always a learning process. And today also there are so many things to learn, sir. Thank you very much for enriching my own personal kitty of knowledge. Thanks to Fiki for inviting me. Coming back to the topic that uh, agriculture as a business and bringing agrarian prosperity to rural India, very specifically. What are the indicators of agrarian prosperity or distress or business of agriculture? How we do we do visualize this? Time is limiting. I'll be very brief. If you go to factor side indicators, there has been very good uh, assessments done. And every time we paint a very gloomy picture of uh, Indian agriculture, the success stories have been said by Power Sahib himself. If we compare 1984-85 with what we have in 1415, we do see that one of the factor side indicators of agriculture moving in a path of commercialization, that is the seed, which is the prime input for as an agriculture growth driver. And uh, the certified quality seed that the farmers use has increased six times as compared to 84-85. Another indicator that is use of power. If you compare with 84, 85, in 1415, we have also increased 6.7 times. Fertilizer per hectare consumption, 195% increase over 84, 85 in 1415. And similarly, irrigation. Powers have been, you know, very adequately, in fact, presented how revolution could be brought about in Baramati. The first and foremost requirement was to convert rain-fed situation to irrigated situation. Providing adequate water for agriculture to flourish. And if we compare 14-15 with 84-85, uh, this irrigation coverage has increased 30%. So these are the kind of broad indicators of how we have moved in the direction of 
making agriculture more lucrative, remunerative, and productive, and also in the process, enabling commercialization, and for business models based on agriculture to develop and flourish. And that is also reflected if you go to product side indicators. And the studies reveal that the share of non-food grain crops, they have increased tremendously. And for instance, that is increased in 10 percent points in the increase of non-food grain crops as a, over, over food grain crops. And similarly, value of crop outputs that are also increased 16 percentage points. And that is again a very clear indicator that we have moved in that direction and over successive governments and also under the current leadership. The other indicator which is excellent, which is an excellent indicator is how much we trade and trade in the international market. And that's an indicator that we are doing business. And this is business of agriculture. And if we see that in 1991, the volume of agricultural export was 2.65 billion US dollar. And that increased to 9.43 billion US dollar in 2004-5 annual growth rate of 8.26 percent. In subsequent period, after 2004-05, it has wit witnessed an annual growth rate of more than 17 percent. And in 14-15, this has reached 37.33 billion US dollar. So that indicates that we are doing business in agriculture sector. And more importantly, the net trade surplus from agriculture, and which remained below 5 billion US dollar till 2004-5, that is more than 19 billion US dollar after 2010-11. So these are kind of factor side indicators and also product side indicators that we have slowly transformed Indian agriculture and it still continues from purely a subsistence level of farming to a more commercial farming and today one estimate says that it's more than 80% surplus, marketable surplus, even in food grains, available in rural settings. That has led to diversification. In fact, and diversification has been one of the contributors to this situation. And in fact, this has brought in changes in po poverty elevation in rural areas. I'm not going to really give all the data and details because time is limiting. But despite all this, we also know that 140 million farm holdings and families, 85% are still are small and marginal. The small holding is one of the limitations to move faster in the direction of doing business in agriculture. Leave aside Baramati model, rightly pointed out, is the visionary leadership of Sarad Power Saab, who has brought in this revolutionary change there. And can we bring that elsewhere? That's a different issue altogether. I'm not going to that issue. But the issue is that the realis real realism 
that we must accept. And it is not easy to change. And this is a fact of life and we have to accept the fragmented land holdings and how to address that. We have been trying to address this and it remains an issue to be addressed. And that as a negative, in fact, uh, regulator of faster commercialization of agriculture and uh, developing business of agriculture, development of business of agriculture uh, is there. And agriculture sector productivity, if we compare with non-agriculture sector productivity, you know, this is uh, 62,235 in agriculture sector as compared to worker productivity of non-farm sector being 1,71,587. Now that remains a concern. So the non-farm sector developments as it is happening, as you all know, and the developments in the farm sector and the returns thereof are still, there's a lot of gap, a lot of things to do there. And Power Staff has already given you elaborately how we can do this. And technology as a driver of this. And technology as heading the Indian Council of Agriculture Research, I'll cite one, two examples to say how, and it has been already said. I'll just, uh, uh, you know, finish it, because time is limiting. It's quite a bit of things to say. But technology, we all know the Basmati example. We developed the longest grain basmati in the world, Pusa 1121. And maybe some of you who are dealing with this may be present here in this hall. And that made a sea change. We have been a leader. But see the export and see the export earning. The business of agriculture amply exemplified by just one input. That is Pusa Basmati 1121. More than 30,000 crore rupees earning, more than 5.5 billion US dollar. One variety, more than 60% to the tune of 80% contributing to this business that we do. This is one bright example of how technology can drive. And in the process, benefit farmers. There are adequate uh, you know, uh, assessments have been done. How it is benefiting farmers? I'm not going to those details because time is limiting. Contract farming as a model in case of Basmatis amply benefiting and the process commercializing agriculture and developing beautiful business model through Basmati. The second example, there are plenty of examples. In case of animal sector, if you take, a serious problem is brucellosis. And we have developed a vaccine, which is called, this, is, uh, this, this can uh, address this problem of uh, brucellosis. And if you can use this vaccine and do adequate vaccination of dairy animals using this modified vaccine, we can save to the tune of 160, 100 crores by way of saving lives and also improving productivity and functioning of the animals. There are two examples I said. There are plenty of examples of technology which can drive and bring in that kind of return to the farmers in rural settings. And of course, as it was mentioned, diversification is key to bringing success and also bringing agrarian prosperity to rural India. And, but that would not really suffice. Diversification alone would not suffice. As it was said, market linkage but that may not be also suffice. And Basmati example also tells this vividly. In some years, Basmati farmers suffer because unless we have neatly developed, established value chain, mention was made about it, but they are very loose value chains without any protection to the producers in rural settings who are helpless lots. And I believe by protecting their interest in the value chain itself, we can, and development of these value chains are not many in this country. 
we have loose value chains established. Grape is one model. Sugarcane could be another model. And there could be other few models. Basmati could be one model. Not very well-knit models and well-defined roles in those models. And that would be actually a key contributor to having successful business in agriculture. And we have to think about niche areas, not promoting everything everywhere. That will lead to failure. And there will be a glut in the market, and we will be in troubles. And we have to do these plans. Crop planning, along with diversification plans. And at the end of the day, we have to think about sustainability. And we also, and that is what we are working for, resilience. What contribute to less resilience? You know, contributing to farmers' distress. So we have to bring in resilience through technology intervention. And also sustainability. Whatever we do, it cannot be just business and returns. It has to be also the sustainability, long-term sustainability of these models. So business has to flourish. Farmers have to get more returns, but it has to be done sustainably. And that's what the government is working for. And I believe that uh, there will be plenty of avenues to discuss. There are quite more other things to discuss because time is limiting. So I thank Piki once again for giving me this opportunity to put forth a few points at least. Thank you very much.